almost half a century, the tiny Wexford village of Courtown Harbour has played host to thousands of summer visitors who are drawn back year after year, most of them from Dublin. But last summer, things began to change. Waves of progress came crashing to the shore and 1,200 new holiday homes sprang up almost overnight. So as the village prepares for another summer season, will the old core town of candy floss and caravans be lost forever? Master and grocer Declan Dunbar is one of those people who makes a small holiday village tick. This is an annual event. Window boxes, hanging baskets. Most houses around here do this. We're about two weeks behind time this year, unfortunately, with the weather. But uh, hopefully the next week we'll see us all straightened out again. And Declan's daily toilet patrols are an important part of his role as a community activist. I was just checking to see if there were any names written on the wall because it has been our policy from the day that we took them over that if anybody wrote their names on the wall, we would paint them out immediately. We wouldn't allow them to leave, to stay there 10 minutes. Right, that's the ladies done. They're nice and clean and tidy. Look grand. I check the men's now. Tiles are nice and clean. Tiler holes are in place. Well, the roads are grand. Everything is grand. So we're ready to roll for the weekend. This is my pad here, Stopford House Hotel. Um, I've been here for four years, um, and I'm in the process of buying the property. This is a very old building. Uh, it's a dower house of the Court Town Estate and it's been a hotel since 1947 through a very checkered history. Um, it's in a very bad state of repair and needs considerable work done to it. We had hoped at this stage, um, if we had gone ahead as was anticipated, we would have knocked and rebuilt a certain amount of it. As it is now, we're gonna to have to do it next year. I live here in the hotel alone. Uh, there are 14 bedrooms. So if one gets untidy, one can move to another. Um, the kitchen is very large. The rooms are very large. I don't mind. In the winter, it's uh, very quiet. And um, still, you can make it homely. And it's very, it can be very comfortable. Um, the, I have a dog that lives with me. And the house also is haunted. So there are a couple of ghosts around, which also share the hotel. Um, maybe at a later date you'll be able to um, meet some of them. Down on the Bucket and Spade front line, beach guards Joyce Murphy and John Whelan are settling in for another busy summer. There's our beach dog, Rox. I've been working here for the last five years and I swear I haven't seen a day yet where that dog has been on the beach. He <laughs> just watches everything, stones, rocks, anything. <coughs> Um, you get the odd shout from, you know, some of the girls and stuff, you know, Mitch, Mitch, but, you know, the attention's a bit of fun. Myself and Joyce kind of have competitions of embarrassing each other as well. It's kind of like, Joyce, is that the lad you said you fancy? And she kind of goes, John, is that the girl you were talking about and stuff, so. Well, I'm beach garden charge, but whatever you'd like to call that, like, you know, <laughs> friendly beach garden charge. <laughs> John is um, well known for his different costumes. Yesterday he had, um, how would you say, a speedo aqua blade for ladies. I don't know why, but he brought his sister to and talked yesterday. I don't know whether he's planning on wearing them, but he had them. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna wear them today. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> what kept you so long? My goggles. Slapping on the tip. <laughs> Shit. Slapping on the fake tan, were you? I think you'd be jealous of my great tan. He's proud of his farmer's town. Oh well, could you bite the recipes?
Republican and community activist Alan Switzer is worried that this year's Blue Flag Beach Award is still in doubt. We're going to phone um, Anne Wilkinson from the Blue Flag Organisation or the Department of Marine um, to see if we have the blue flag. I mean, it's important to Core Town to have the blue flag. It's all part and parcel of the Core Town setup. If, if we haven't got a blue flag, it means that we're just another another beach anywhere. I mean, a blue flag gives us a water quality. It means that bathers, people that are coming for a swim, know that they're safe and clean. So we're going in here now to meet Brian McGarry, and we'll make the phone call to see have we been awarded the blue flag. Brian McGarry, I'm calling you from Cortan Harbour. How are you? Do you have some? I am looking for some good news, hopefully. That's great to hear, Anne. Anne, it's great. It's very good. I mean, they've, they've obviously been down and done a, a very thorough study. They're basically, they're complimenting us on the beach management, on the toilet facilities, and the overall quality of Cortan. Core Town's clean beach is one of the village's strengths, although its 1,200 new holiday homes are seen by some as a problem. However, a problem for some is a business opportunity for Daphne O'Donoghue. Daphne is manager of the new Woodside Holiday Estate. Hi, come in. I'm just going to get my checklist and run through a few bits and pieces with my colleagues. Hi. Hi, Daphne. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, um, this is Kathy. Kathy is my uh, assistant. She assists me with my day-to-day -day duties. Mary here is responsible for all the cleaning um, to do with the houses. And this is Aidan. Excuse me for one moment. Court and holidays. Good afternoon. May I help you? One picture, one vase, fire irons, log basket, TV, video, two remote controls, fireside mat. <laughs> Sergeant Mick O'Connor knows the place better than anyone, but he has his own concerns about how Core Town is changing. You have to keep a, an eye on things, and over the years you build up a certain knowledge of uh, families and who's coming, you know. That's why I'd be a little concerned about the strange people coming to the rented houses, uh, different people every week. The same people have been coming down to these caverns, I'd say, for three generations in some cases. The lady who lives in this caravan has been coming here for almost 30 years. Kathleen Murray is from Rahini in Dublin. God, Annie, it's great to see Lovely you again. To see I'm you delighted. Too, huh? God, yeah. We will. This is Annie. She's a great friend of mine. She has a mobile just across there. And, uh, of course, that's Amanda. She's the youngest one I have down with me at the moment. Where will we go? We'll walk down to town and see. Yeah. Well, now, uh, I had to change, but because these are my arriving clothes. <laughs> They're my Dublin clothes. Yeah, Coming yeah. and going clothes. They're my Dublin clothes. <laughs> uh, I'll change, and we'll go down and see if there are any yeah, changes change down, down there. <laughs> Look at Abercababra. Well, you wouldn't think you'd see one of them down <laughs> here, would you, Annie? I think you'd only see one of them up in Dublin. Yeah, big cities yeah. now. Oh, isn't it great? Uh, that's the, be the beacon. That's a nice It's club. a nightclub. Yeah, yeah, a night disco club. nightclub. They come from Dublin, even on buses, special buses down to this. It's packed. Remember I believe it's very good. Room, that Joe was the ballroom, Dickie, Dickie Rock, Rock and Joe Dolan. And Joe and Dolan. They can't can beat the good old days. Yeah, it was great. Every night of the week, yeah. there was a different artist on, and it was absolutely brilliant. So there's horses. No, they're after doing a shop love. And I believe there's a new Italian restaurant around there. We have a look. Yeah, come on, we'll have a look. Now, isn't yeah. Cortown coming up in the world? Oh, there's an Africa Barbara and a new Italian oh, restaurant. restaurant. Oh, oh brilliant. Did it was the menu. No. See what's oh, on yes, the menu. <gasps> God. See all the lovely, you can have a Mediterranean oh, dish or an Italian dish. Now, which would you like? We'll treat ourselves some night and day. Lovely. <laughs> Inside the new Italian restaurant, Chef Dara Hughes is getting ready to launch a pasta assault on Cortan's traditional bun burger habits. Well, today's a big day for us, so uh, it's the first night we've got all the menu together. We're open tonight. We're, um, we're treating all the staff and all the people that were working 
involved in the whole project. So there tonight, it's a, it's a bit of a tester for us, but we have to have everything right tonight. All right. And there's three areas all under one roof. So you're going for three areas of the market. There's a takeaway, there's a sit-down grill bar and diner. And then we have the Italian restaurant, which we're opening tonight, Il Molino. And uh, so it's, it's a multitude of uh, a multitude of uh, eating experiences all under one roof, hopefully, so. But uh, they're going inside, but they just use this as a come-through area. This is a staff motivator, you know? So we have a reasonably blunt edge on it, so it's more so um, crushing the bone than cutting clean through it, you know? Dave, hurry up now. Back at Woodside, Daphne is her own best staff motivator. Love, love basket, picture, microwave, first aid kit. Oh, she's very tough. What do you call me? The slave driver. The slave driver. <laughs> I've always just, I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> that used to be our secret. Okay. Get up! At the Stopford House Hotel, all business is good business, as far as Catherine is concerned. Tonight, um, there's a traveller's 21st birthday party here, and we're in a state of absolute panic and chaos, as always. You're Peter, I want you. Peter, this is um, Peter Cloak here, uh, our right-hand man, who does everything, and I mean literally everything here. Um, could you just, there's a sink um, under the stairs which needs to be put into the room across and locked in. There's the television behind the desk which needs to be taken out and put into the front room and locked in there, that's the key for that. And um, the stairs, and the ones upstairs, but Brian will do that. We're just uh, putting things out of the way. The televisions are in the front room. Um, we just brought them in out of the way. And we locked the front way, fr locked the front room and bring them in here. And the centre will be locked as well. I think it's limited to where they can go. Uh, a lot of people don't make them so welcome, so um, this is the problem for them. This is Brian here. Brian? This is Brian, who is uh, also a barman, but he's having to do sandwiches as well. <laughs> The most fact, we're all doing sandwiches. We should all be doing them now. I must go and do sandwiches. See you later. Alan Switzer isn't too pleased with Catherine's choice of clientele. Well, in my opinion, um, she's encouraging the wrong type of business for the area. Um, any of the other premises in the town will not entertain the people that she, she, she will bring into the town. Today is the opening of Woodside and uh, the lads are outside putting up the sign and uh, we're just going to have a little bit of a celebration. It's a glorious day for it and uh, we're all really looking forward to it. So uh, I miss the may go out now to see how they do it. Here we are. <laughs> My red ribbon and the champagne, two bottles, one to drink <laughs> and uh, one to uh, open it officially. Woodside owner Hedley Fleming isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. It's nice to see you with a shovel in your hand. <laughs> Born on one hey, Hedley, we should have put 24 hours after that inquiry within. <laughs> <laughs> and Trevor might object to, to, to that. Deli <laughs> to the delight of uh, your husband. Yeah, <laughs> what do you want to do now? Go up that way a bit, Shay. A bit more vertical there. Very spanky. Let me give my reins here. He's a bit shy. If I tickle you here, what happens? <laughs> what about if I tickle you? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll get out of the way. Stop causing havoc. <laughs> so finally, the troops line out for Daphne's official launch. So I'll just say that I... Wait, it's going to fall again. Okay, I christened this prestigious development. Yay! Yeah. 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 Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> this head comes back and hits me. <laughs> Champagne at 50 paces. We're not going out with each other. He's 17. Slightly a bit older.
shoulders, so no. <laughs> You've yeah. actually got a girlfriend, haven't you? Yeah. Lost right there. <laughs> First summer I worked here, like, you kind of, there was a few fellas, like, you get to know the, the Dubliners coming down and stuff, and, the, you know, there was a few nice fellas around, but, uh, you kind of get to know the crowd. This is, like, my fifth year working here now, so you kind of, you know people too well, so. <laughs> it's trying, it's trying You've to change. You've gone through them all. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Riviera, uh, Court Town Riviera, isn't it? Court Town Riviera, and that's the way we look at the sunny southeast. It's lovely, isn't it? Why would you go anywhere else? Because we have our own food, our own money. It's not for the money, it's not for the food, so we have to. <laughs> yeah, so we're happy in any way down here. At the Stockford House Hotel, things are well in hand for the arrival of the Traveller's 21st birthday party. What are we putting on these? Ham? Uh, uh, Do you, what? Tito. Tito sandwiches, yeah. We like high standard of cuisine. It's the only baskets. Put out baskets. And we have no baskets, them. We'll Just honey. cut them bread. <laughs> Catherine is disastrous when it comes to organizing. Absolutely. Well, I have full confidence always in everything being perfect and everything running smoothly. No sign of sliced ham or crisp sandwiches back at Imolino. We use lots of cream, lots of butter, you know, um, eggs. Everything you shouldn't have, really, you know, because, you know, who wants to live a miserable life and, and stay living till 75, you know? You can burn, die, crumple up at 40. Pat keeps losing his mobile phone. Pat's our, elect <laughs> he's our electrician. And he spends three hours here, an hour and a half of which he looks for his mobile phone that he's left down somewhere. <laughs> Did you find your mobile yet, Pat? <laughs> the weather is very important in any seaside resort. Hello, girls. If you don't get the weather, you have unhappy people. You can't build sandcastles. How are you, lads? How are you, How are you, you well? Not bad, bad. Did you go for pints? Oh, no. Or gave me cards? <laughs> We're going for... Uh... See, we get a few women. Big car. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? Is that many few, around? See, oh, see seen a few a, going up there. See, this nice one there now. What do you think of her? See if we get a couple of young ones. Huh? Two young ones we want. <laughs> no, it's not an old one at all. The old one is no you. Hi. Oh, they kick your big one out of them. Would it? It would, yeah. Ah, oh, you're awful, man. You're hardy lads now. Well, let's what? keep an eye on you. You want something to start us off, you know? Huh? Oh, yeah. Let's keep an eye on you, definitely. The very same as a car. Yeah? We want a good battery. But for all the good humour, real anxieties are surfacing in the village. But what they're doing to it now, it wouldn't come back. Mm. Would they continue with that development there? Sure they no, that, that, that development. Too much, you think, too quick, is it? That's for what? Too much, too quick. Well, well basically, quick. when you get that, there's only two kinds of people coming here in the future. That's the quick and the dead. That's well, the local people who live here all their lives won't count. A lot of hard questions there. I think I, I, think I go a bit further. Me. See you, Declan. See you. See you, Lily. He was talking about all the holiday houses that have been built on the outskirts of the village, the 1800 to 2000 that are being built under the tax incentive scheme. And to him, he says they spoil the place, and he's worrying about what they'll attract with their short-term lettings from newspapers and television ads. It's a worry that's in the village. Everybody is a little concerned at the moment about it, and waiting to see what happens. Just a company car now I'll have in about two or three years. <laughs> they want to swap. Back at the Stafford, <laughs> Catherine's <laughs> staff are welcoming the traveller party that nobody else wanted. They're having a party! This is 
James' mother here. I'm his mother-in-law. And she's got this beautiful cake. And we're lighting the candles now. And hopefully they'll say happy birthday. And then he's going to blow it out and all his wishes will come true. <laughs> boy seems happy, but over at the bar, one of his guests is not. Excuse me, missus. No, Dublin. Yeah. I was in every nightclub in Dublin all my life. Yeah. All over. Yeah. Copper face and the lot. There's no way a bottle of Budweiser is two pound eight. This is how I live. For about two. Two pound eight for bottle of Budweiser. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is on any There's nobody Anyways. here complaining except your good as There's also a bit of a tiff back at Il Molino. Not that one. Dim, f***ing dim. I told you that, that's the cassata ice cream. It's all right, you can go with it now, you can go with it now. I'm asking you a question. I have no idea. In any park, any disco, anywhere in Ireland, no that charges idea. two pounds. I'm absolutely losing. 80 for what's the world wide. I have no idea. I'm going to go over to the night over in the vegan, right? Yeah. At 320. And that has no light. How much? 320. For what's the world wide? A bottle of wood. It must be yeah, random, that's the bacon, you know the big night called the sort of pasta way out. That's three pounds. I don't like that. But I could never see two pound eighty for what the bull was. Well, you are seeing it here tonight, I'm well, afraid. Well, I pay you, it doesn't matter. You don't, if you don't want it, it's okay. It's okay. But well, like, excuse me, I, I never heard of my life. Well, that is the truth. Well, the thing is, as Peter said, if that's what the charge is. It doesn't eating, matter yet. Well, I would pay the money. But I've never seen my I'm life, the like of it in my that. life. Two pounds. But that is our price, and that is what we charge. Okay. And they're there for anyone to see. It's the end of the first evening at Il Molino, and harmony reigns once more as John Sheridan and Mick O'Neill, chip shop owners turned Italian restaurateurs, celebrate a successful launch. We wind up with toast, kitchen staff, and the lovely yeah. waitresses and the chefs for the lovely food we had tonight. <laughs> Chef Dara Hughes is happy as well. I am glad it's all over. Um, see, once you know it's all, when it's all over, you know it can't be done anyway. Well, uh, yeah. At the Stopford House Hotel, the evening is over too, but there's trouble brewing. Some of the guests can't get home. Well, this is, this is a difficult part. Um, normally they've booked taxis themselves and come by taxi and they've then um, organised their way back. But when they don't, it's sometimes quite hard because um, the taxi drivers think that they're going to be a lot of trouble and think that they're going to... Um, fight and what have you, you know? If no bus comes, we have to walk home. We have to walk home. home, it's as simple as that. And I just look at my shoes, love. I can't walk yeah. home in here. And look at her shoes. She can't walk home in here. Look, love, look at my shoes. Look at her shoes. Look, look at her shoes. Look at her shoes. Look at her shoes. This is Catherine some of Lodge here from Stopford House Hotel and uh, we have we've had a function here tonight and um, we're trying to um, get the, the people are all ready to go home and um, we can't get any um, min minibuses to come for them because they're travellers. I had two uh, travellers approach me on the dance floor there about five minutes ago and um, offered me £20 a piece, that was £40, to bring him from Gory to Arco. This is really, really hard now. It looks like we're going to have to get our, our own staff and ourselves to drive them home. Um, I don't know how we're going to manage this because there seems to be about 50 of them and we've only got about two cars and an open high ace van. So we have to see what we can do. And so, Core Town summer season for 99 is up and running. Happily for some, and unhappily for others, it looks like Catherine and her staff will be chauffeuring until dawn. Next week on Harbour Nights, will Dara's pasta please the nation's number one Italian food critic? Not as good as everybody else gets. Will Mick O'Connor survive the madness of the season's first bank holiday weekend? Just one next door for sale. Just next door. Can Catherine's hotel be healed by the power of prayer? Don't know you. And Beachcar Joyce is in for a beautiful surprise. Get it.